Hello, my name is Carrie, and this is the Creative Obsession YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to returning viewers and welcome to new viewers. Any of you that are new, this is my little channel where I talk about um, what I'm up to creatively, mostly knitting and quilting. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about some painting and um, I think that's it. Some sewing. There's some other sewing. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, you can find any links to where you can find me or any of the things I talk about in today's episode in the description box below this YouTube video. Uh, I am uh, the dyer behind the Creative Obsession hand dyed yarn. You can find me on Etsy and I'm on Instagram as the Creative Obsession. So there you go. I am coming to you from near the Portland area in Oregon and today is June 29th, 2018. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. If you watched last time, I told you I was going on a camping trip down south and um, so we did that. I have some, some pictures and stuff that I will put at the end of this video if you're interested. Uh, it was a very beautiful, wonderful trip. It was hot. Um, Oregon kind of had a little heat spell and we were camping in our trailer but it was in a campground with no hookups we had no power or water it was all just what we could do with our trailer which is fine but you can't run any kind of fans or air conditioners or anything like that so it was like 90s during the day which would heat everything up and there was just no way of doing any kind of fan so if you've been here for a while, you know I don't like the hot weather. <laughs> so, you know, we managed, we did fine. Um, we did some hikes, we went to Crater Lake. And um, so that was pretty fun. We came home on a Friday and Saturday morning, my back went out and it went out pretty bad. So I have a previous injury from back when I worked in special ed and I was a one-on-one -on -one, uh, assistant for a school-age girl who was confined to a wheelchair with cerebral palsy. And one day when I had to transfer her from her wheelchair to a stander, I tweaked my back. Every once in a while it kind of goes out. This time it kind of went out quite a, quite a bit. It was very painful. Kind of put me on my butt for several days. Um, I'm still very sore, but it is getting better. Uh, I was able to get into a chiropractor on Tuesday and she uh, got me some adjustments. I go back next week, but it's a slow process and I'm not a good, I'm not a patient patient. <laughs> I get antsy, I get bored, I want to do stuff. There's, I think of all the things I could be doing or maybe if I just go do this or that and it's like it just hurt to move. So um, I'm now getting to the point where I feel like I can do some stuff. Yesterday I did quite a bit and I'm a little more sore today. But um, after I'm done recording this, I'm going to go put some ice on my back and um, I can sit and edit. So that'll be good. So when I was camping, I didn't do as much knitting as I had thought I might um, because it was so warm. It's like it just was warm. <laughs> It was hot and I'm a wimp I don't like the hot weather and so you sit there and you feel kind of sticky and climbing the last thing you want to hold on to is some wool um, even though I had socks and that kind of thing I did a little bit but just not that much and we were busy doing stuff and we were taking drives and I like to to look at where we're going and and observe all that I can observe it was just very very pretty and very interesting and so I didn't do a whole lot of knitting except on our trip down there and on the way back, just highway knitting. And so I was able to work on a hat and I'll show that to you in a little bit. But once I got home and my back went out, I got a lot of knitting done because I was not moving out of the chair a whole lot. So I have stuff to show you. Um, the, I'm going to just kind of jump right into some of the sewing stuff I've got going on. Um, right now it's just sort of things that are going to happen in the future. So um, this came up, this pattern, it's called the Jelly Roll Rug. And you basically sew a rug, which would look similar to the old style like braided rugs, but you do it using Jelly Roll you know, fabric. A Jelly Roll is a name that Moda um, came up with, but it basically refers to um, you get a roll and it is a, it's two and a half inch strips of fabric. You get 40 to 42 strips and it's every line or every design in a designer's line. If that makes any sense. So a designer will design 
a, a, a line of fabric and they'll have it in different colorways and and coordinating things and so this jelly roll is two and a half inch strips and you get every piece of that fabric or every piece of that line in that roll so this uses two and a half inch strips and I thought that's cool and I I saw the pattern came out quite a while ago and I was like do you really need to buy the pattern I mean it seems pretty easy to me I kind of get the gist of it but I've also done rugs um, with a clothesline actually I should show you hang on a second okay so this is a rug I did I'm not super proud of it because I don't really like the colors that I did but you get the idea so this was one that I did and it's using clothesline I dyed the clothesline using writ dye and um, it feels a little clowny but I keep it up here and I keep it on the back side of my ironing board so that when I'm spraying starch and stuff it's not just landing on the carpet it's landing on this but this basic idea I'm gonna put it close if you can see it's just a zigzag stitch over the rope so basically this rug is the same thing but you're just making the rope with the fabric so I because I'm sitting there on the computer. It's really dangerous for me to not be busy doing stuff because if I have time to just scour the internet, I'd get myself into trouble. But um, things that I saw people, people have done some tutorials on YouTube kind of giving hints and tricks and I thought, is it really that hard? Because <laughs> to me it seems really simple. So I thought, well, let me give it a try. I didn't feel like I needed to buy the pattern. Let me give it a try. So I just grabbed some two and a half inch strips that I had um, left over from a previous project and they're solids. So that does make things look a little bit different. Um, so basically you take your two and a half inch strip, you take a two and a half inch strip of batting and then you're folding the strip to make like a rope. Um, one thing that like I've got lots of scrap batting because I have leftovers from when I've made quilts and, and then you've got like you know the batting comes 90 whatever inches wide and if your quilt's only 70 inches wide you've got that 20 inch piece of batting left so I've got a lot of batting um, there's several people that are suggesting buying there's a um, I don't remember what it's called but somebody has batting on a roll that's already cut to the two and a half inch strips I think that's a little well you make your own decision that's not wasn't for me I have batting and then you have to stick it together because you need a very long strip. What you're doing with your jelly rolls is you're sewing them all together. So you have this very, very long strip of two and a half inch wide fabric. You need batting that matches that. And so there is a batting tape and I can't find mine for some reason. <laughs> I don't think I used it all up, but I may have. Um, I know I didn't have a ton left over and I thought, well, you know what if I just use interfacing so I have this interfacing and it's got the little glue it's adhesive on the back side of it and the front side's not and it's just a lightweight interfacing so I just cut strips I don't know if that's showing up I just cut a strip about one inch wide by the width of my batting and I just pressed it on so there you can see the seam on the back side but it's holding it together and so I thought, okay, well, that's going to work. I don't need to have special batting tape. I can stick my batting together and I just pressed it and I used a pressing cloth, you know. And this is, this batting is um, Hobbs 8020, so it's 80% cotton and 20% polyester, which is just my standard batting that I like to use. So I took some strips and sewed them together in a big long strip and started putting it together like I did with the rug. So, I mean, this is kind of ugly for one. I think the fabric's ugly, but, um, and I was trying out different length, stitch, stitch lengths and stuff like that. But I made this little mini rug <laughs> to just see how it would work. So you've got your strip that you folded in half and stuff, and then you've sewn it, and then you zigzag it together. So I thought, okay, well, that seems easy enough. And it's, a, you know, it's a nice sturdy rug. I think this would be really cute if you had some, um, printed fabric so it was busier I think that it would kind of hide some of the wonkiness like when you go around these tight corners you can't help but have it be kind of crinkled because you're you're you know when you're doing this with it there's nowhere for that to go so the beginning is a little crunchy you know a little bit weird in there um, and my zigzag probably could have been better but I was using a machine I haven't used in a while and um, 
I, I took out my Janome machine because it has a walking foot, a true walking foot. I like to sew with my faf, with, which has an, a built-in what they call even feed foot, and that helps both the top layer and the bottom layer move together um, at the same time. And for something as thick as this where you've got like fabric folded in on itself and batting folded in on itself, it's pretty thick, and I knew a true walking foot would be more successful. So I took out my Janome. So it's just a matter of playing with like, you know, where to set my needle and what stitch width and length and all that stuff. But I think overall it would be pretty cool. So Craftsy is having, I think they still have it. Um, a lot of their fabric they have on, um, on clearance. So I was able to get a jelly roll for like $18. And usually jelly rolls are like $36 to $40 depending on the designer. So I thought if I can make a rug for like 18 bucks, that's pretty good. And I've got the batting, so I'll just put batting together. And um, so then I kept seeing on these people um, when they were doing their YouTube tutorials on like, well, I don't want to give anything in the way in the pattern because she gives you lots of tips on how to make this work better, blah, blah, blah. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and buy the pattern because maybe there's maybe there's something that she says about this. And so I got online and um, I found it on Fat Quarter Shop, which is a great place to buy fabric. And um, the one thing that bothered me is they were charging just as much for the PDF as they were for the paper pattern. And I thought, the PDF, you're not printing it. You didn't put out anything. You've gotten the design, which I'm willing to pay for, but don't charge me the same as it would be if you printed. Anyway. I hemmed and hawed about it quite a bit, but finally decided to just buy it. I really didn't need it. There's nothing in there that gives you any other tips than what I already could kind of figure out on my own. But if if you haven't ever done something like this, then yeah, the pattern's probably pretty helpful. So anyway, I have the pattern. That's the cover of it. So you can see what it looks like. Um, I'm getting fabric. It should come next week. And then I'm gonna try and make a rug. So this is like to be continued, <laughs> to hopefully be something, hopefully turn out to be really neat. Um, but it was it was good for me to try it on just some scrap stuff because I can just throw this away. So um, there's also a pattern, it's the Jelly Roll Rug 2, which she just does it as a rectangle instead of an oval, but really you can do it, you can make it round. It's just a matter of how you um, make your, your start. And so the longer you make your beginning fold, the longer and narrower your rug is gonna be. If you start it and you make it in a circle, it's just gonna stay in a circle. So, um, it's, it is fun, and um, I think it'll be really cute. I think the fabric I got will look really neat. So stay tuned for that. Um, I did try and work on, on a couple of, um, of my coasters. I just couldn't sit and sew for very long because it was hurting my back to sit there. So something I had seen on Instagram, and it was Jody's Instagram. She's Blissful, Accidental Bliss is her company name. She has an Etsy shop where she sells uh, project bags and hand dyed yarn, and her name's Jody. and I'll put the link to uh, her Instagram and stuff. Um, she had posted that she was painting, doing watercolor painting with um, through a subscription type service called Let's Make Art. And I saw it and I watched and, and, and like saw the things she was making and I thought that seems really cool. I, I just hesitate to do subscription stuff but I thought I was really curious and so I missed out on June's and then I saw, so then I started following Let's Make Art on Instagram and, and I saw some of the paintings they were going to do for July and I thought okay let me try it. I can cancel any time. I dabbled in in watercolor years and years ago. I took some uh, community college classes to learn to do some some watercolor and I I liked it but I at the time I didn't like the lack of control that I felt like I had with watercolor because with watercolor you have to be willing to let things blend when you don't want them to blend and because it's water and so things move so I'm going to show you this is one of my paintings this is one I did like I said years and years ago so it's a pansy it hangs up here in my studio um, you know, and I did okay. I felt like I did okay. I did, um, you know, mostly copied, uh, sorry, mostly copied, um, 
you know, out of a book and stuff. And so I thought, you know what, I want to try it again. And, and it just makes these little small packages. So I, sub I, I subscribed to Let's Make Art and I just got my box yesterday and I haven't, I haven't really opened it, but look at this. You just made Bob Ross happy. <laughs> So I thought we'll do a little unboxing here. So um, so this came in the mail yesterday. I did open it and I um, all I've done is um, the, the box was full of shredded newspaper. So I took that off the top and that's all I've done. So I haven't really looked in it. So we have welcome to July and some information on some of the paintings we're gonna do. There are are these I'm trying to get the paper off. week one so you've got week one and there's little bottles of paint in here let me see what this is oh they're so cute oh itty teeny little bottles of, of watercolor paint so that's this is going to be the paint colors and what I need to make week one's painting so it's in a little bag that says make. I don't know if you can't see it very well. Then week two, let me get the paper off. That's week four. Week two, we're gonna make some kind of gemstone. Week one is this like cactus little painting we're gonna do. Week three, I can't really see it on this little card, but it's gonna be like a, um, kind of a landscape sunset type of thing and then week four oh, this was the this was what got me hopefully there's some pictures of it and it's I don't know if you can tell but it's like the top of an elephant's head and there's like rainbows coming out of his um, his snout his trunk so then we have a little postcard there's some transfer paper, so evidently there's a drawing or something that we're gonna transfer on. And then part of what I got, which doesn't come every month, but when you're the first time subscriber, you get a discount on a couple of watercolor brushes and this, um, there we go, a butcher palette tray. So it's like a metal tray and, and um, so I thought, okay, I, I, I wanted to get the right tools and that looked like a cool thing to have. So I got that, That, like I said, that was kind of a one-time purchase deal. Okay, so, okay. sorry, this might be loud. I'm trying to get it out of here, <laughs> can't get it out. So that's gonna be week one. This is gonna be week two. This is going to be week three. And then what made me do it was what was what's going to be week four. Look at that elephant. Oh my God. So it has everything you need. I do have to supply my own uh, watercolor paper, which I have. And, um, she has a YouTube channel and you can follow along and she takes you step by step of how to do the different paintings. Oh, actually it came with watercolor paper. That's what's behind this is watercolor. So I have everything I need. So I think it's gonna be really fun and I'm excited to, to kind of try it again. Like I said, I did it years and years ago. And I'm excited to try it again because I am in a different place in my in my art where I am a little more free with not feeling like everything has to be in control. Um, you know, like I said, I, I was doing that for a while and I was getting really frustrated with watercolor because it wasn't controlled enough. And now, you know, over the, the years of doing different things, and just maturing and not trying to feel like I'm in control of everything <laughs> it um, my art has gotten looser so I'm I'm looking forward to doing this so um, she already has the first video up for the first painting um, but I don't know if I'll have time to do it 
before the first of July. So you basically what it is is you have the four paintings. You do one a week, and then the next month it's a new set of paintings with new little bottles of of um, paint and instructions and all that. So I am excited. I'm excited to try something new, and um, so stay tuned to see what happens with that. Um, so I am going to move now into what I've done knitting wise. And I do have a finished object. Let me just gather my knitting things because everything's kind of pushed over there. All right, so like I said, I have a finished object. I made a worm hat. So I did this with Lion Brand Mandala yarn. And their Mandala yarn is listed as a DK weight yarn and it is self-striping like wide stripes and so um, it's a very soft yarn I really liked working with it it's hundred percent acrylic and this is the worm hat and it is by oh, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that <laughs> but I'll put a link to it down below so basically you do a um, folded brim so I knitted a while and then folded it in half and then connected it to the inside and then you're just alternating knit rows with purl rows and it makes this kind of ribbed you know what this reminded me of and I can't think of the name of it and I know somebody out there is going to know it you know how you see kind of in pictures what they call a beehive and it looks like the little like a little dome like this and it's called something and I couldn't find it I looked online and Jim and I couldn't figure out what the name of it is but it kind of reminded me of that so I wasn't sure because I, I was camping and I didn't have my scale and I thought I don't know I wanted to make two hats out of the same ball because you get a big ball as you can see I bought more so I bought that one and I bought this one because I'm gonna, I want to make more. I think they're good chemo hats, which is what this is going to be for. Um, and so I was afraid, like, I, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell, like, is it the same? You sit there and hold it, and, like, I think this feels heavier. So I did this um, with eight pearl rounds, and it says to go to ten, but I just felt like it was going to end up being too slouchy. I probably could have gone a little bit further, but this hat ended up being 50 grams, like right on the nose. And it's a 150 gram ball. So I could make three of this size out of this ball. Um, I did cast on with the, with the next color to make the next one. And this time I'm trying it with a provisional cast on. So that really light aqua color is, is my waist yarn. So I'm gonna try it with a provisional cast on to see if um, picking up the stitches to the inside, maybe it makes a little bit less of a ridge. Um, I had Jim try it on because it's got a little bald head and it fits him better. It's a little snug on him, so it would prob this would probably end up being for a kid, um, which is probably good that I didn't Go too tall um, so I I knit the body of it on a size 6 and I did my brim on a size 4 and I think that I think it's too snug so the next one I did same amount of stitches but I'm started it on a size 6 and I'm just gonna do 6 the whole way and see what that turns out the thing about making chemo caps is it's gonna fit somebody you know, I'm not making it for anybody specific. And when they go through, the patients go through to pick their hats, they'll pick something that fits them. So this could go to a kid. It could go to an adult with a little teeny head. <laughs> but, you know, it's very, it, because of the nature of the hat, it's very forgiving and it's very flexible on who it's going to fit. So I started the next hat and um, I am gonna try and go a little bit longer with it. Um, so I probably won't get three hats out of it. But um, I'll, I don't know, I'll see. I'll see what, it, what happens. But that was a really good knit for me to do while we were driving because I'm working with bigger needles, which is easier for me to knit with um, when, when I'm in the car. It's hard for me to do socks just because we're in a truck with the towing a trailer and so things are a little jiggly. And so to try and get a sock needle in the sock yarn is, it's just more challenging for me. So that's my finished. 
I also have another finished. Last time I showed you, I was making the Eki cowl. And this is a pattern by Hillary Smith Callis. And it's kind of a bandana style cowl and I finished it. And um, I was using a gradient skein of yarn from Wendy's Wonders. And basically you, you knit it flat and then you seam it up the back. So I have quite a contrast from when I started. Um, I knew I had more than enough yarn and I actually, and you can kind of see here, you see how it's very, very great. I mean, her gradient was really good. And then right here, there's more of a distinct line. That's because I actually broke the yarn there. Um, I, it started with this light gray and it seemed like there was, because you're on a narrower spot, there was gonna be too much light gray and I really wanted to try and get into the red and I didn't get into the red. I was getting there, I was getting into more of a reddish gray and you can kind of see that here, it's got a little bit more of a reddish tinge, but I never did get into the, um, the red part. So this skein of yarn, um, it's Wendy's Wonders and so she has great gradient skeins and she's on Etsy, I'll put the link below. Um, the tag didn't say what the makeup of, of the yarn was, but I have a feeling there may be some silk in here just because of the drape that I have. But um, I think it's gonna be cool because I can wear it as a cowl and I don't have to try and style it. <laughs> it just sort of styles itself. Um, so you can wear it like that. Yeah, so I will get use out of this. Oh, actually I should put that in the back. There we go, it goes this way so that my seam is in the back. I will get use out of this. Um, I might even make another one. I kind of wish this was a little bit wider. Maybe if I just do that, there. So um, I kind of wish this was in it. That would have been good, but I couldn't tell. I, 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 what I should have done, which didn't really want the red. Yeah, I don't know. I should have started with the red so that I knew I had that in there and then went out to the gray and it would have actually not ended up with this gray in it. It doesn't matter. This is good. I will have a lot of use out of this without the red because I don't wear this color red. I just thought it would be kind of fun. So anyway, the key cowl, super easy to do. Um, I did make it a little bit, what did I do? I added rows to it because I wanted it to be bigger around this way. I think that's what I did. I added extra rows. I don't know how many. I don't even think I wrote it down. I think I just kind of went. And then I stopped when this piece this that I was knitting on was the same size as where I started so those could be seamed together. So I don't know stitch counts or anything like that, but I do know that I like it. I like that it's gradient because I love gradient. There you can see that kind of reddish gray. I do love ombres and gradient things, so that makes me happy. So fingering weight yarn, um, fun fun pattern. I mean, you know, it's an, it was a good kind of mindless pattern. Another thing that I did was I was working on my first toe up socks. I gotta adjust, okay. My first toe up socks and I used a Turkish cast on following the YouTube tutorial that Christy of Relatively Crafty had um, put online and I wanted to also do an afterthought heel. So I have a hoe except for that little strip of gray. So I did the Turkish cast on toe. I was doing a three by one rib and I did an afterthought heel and the afterthought heel I, I did um, the Kirby Werby where you cut it and I followed Rachel's tutorial. That Rachel of the Treehouse Knits has a tutorial on YouTube of how to how to do the Kirby Werby. And she gave some suggestions of knitting when you pick up your stitches of, of knitting extra before you start the decreases to give you more depth, which I need because I have a high end step. Um, and so I really like them. I like the afterthought heel, especially with something that's kind of striped because it gives more of a swirled let me see if I do it this way. 
I don't know. It just, it didn't break this up and make any kind of weird pooling on the top, which happens when you do um, like a heel flap and gusset or something like that. Not super sure that I'm like excited about the toe up because I don't like casting off that many stitches. I did do, um, I don't know if it's Judy's stretchy bind off or something, but a Stacy at Very Pink Knits um, has a tutorial for making a stretchy bind off. And, and it and so that worked I, and I don't know if she was showing you Judy's or not but um, I would rather Kitchener a toe than cast off it took me longer to cast off the, with the stretchy bind off than it is for me to Kitchener a toe so I, I liked I like the afterthought heel it was easy to do the Turkish cast on I just think for my style I think I'm better toe or top down, but at least now I know I can do a toe up. So I have to go back and watch Christy's tutorial again to cast on the second sock, um, which I couldn't do when I was camping. I had like one little blip on my phone. It was just enough that I could keep in contact with my mom because my dad was in the hospital and, um, and I could post on Instagram, but I couldn't like look anything else up. So, um, as I mentioned, my dad was in the hospital, um, some complications from some surgery, but he's getting better and he's okay. Um, but I went and was at the hospital with my mom and stuff. And so I was at a point on this sock where I was needing to like measure and figure it out. And being that it was new, it wasn't just like second nature. So I grabbed a skein of yarn. I'm trying to get it untangled. A skein that I had dyed as like let me see what this does and I just did a vanilla sock and I really like it I, I'm gonna try and duplicate it um, this was just a one skein deal I like the subtle striping that it has so what my plan is is to do that as uh, the toe and the heel so this one I'm doing top down and I've marked where my heels gonna go and so now I'm going backwards and let me know if this if I'm doing this right or not but I have my sock ruler so what I'm doing is I'm putting the sock ruler in to where the where my little marker is and then measuring up is that how you guys do it to figure out how when to do your toe so I think I think I'm I think I'm where my I think I'm close it's so hard because I know exactly where to do it when I go the other way and um, like when the when the heels actually in so I think I may go another half an inch and then do the toe but that's how I'm gauging it is by where I put the marker of where the heels gonna go so I hope that's right I can't really try it on because it doesn't have a heel and I can't get it over my foot we'll see that's another reason why I'm doing a contrasting toe and heel is because if it if it's not right I'll know exactly where to pull this out and like continue to knit or rip back or whatever so that's one of the purposes and that's like a summary color I think it, I think it'll be fun so um, so wish me luck <laughs> to see how that works out I'm getting close I'm getting really close and so I'm writing it down so that if I did it again and and that sock I'm doing um, just straight vanilla there's no ribbing or anything like that so I want to see if the after afterthought heel fits me without having the ribbing over the instep fingers crossed so um, so that's that oh really that's about it so like I showed before I did pick up because I was at Walmart and these are only like five bucks and if I can make two to three hats from five dollars and that's pretty economical it is soft um, acrylic is good for chemo hats because anybody can get them and anybody can wash them and whatever and these are fun because you don't know exactly how it's gonna look and you'll get two or three different hats from the same ball of yarn they'll look really different so that's going to be coming up. So um, I hope everybody has a fun 4th of July. And because that is coming up, you notice my flag wear. <laughs> this is my only 4th of July shirt I have. Um, but and so if you've stuck out this long, thank you so much for being here. I am going to talk a little bit about my trip 
on my camping trip. So um, if you're done, we'll see you later. And if you'd like to hang out, um, let me just kind of give you a rundown of what happened. I will show some pictures at the end of this so you can see because it was just so pretty. But um, we drove down and it's about a four hour drive and got to the campground, new campground for us. And it was a, it was beautiful. It was a great campground, had a wonderful bathroom with showers and stuff, which was nice since we weren't hooked up. We can take a shower in our trailer, but it, we just would prefer not to if, if we can use somebody else's shower. So, um, so we just kind of chilled out the first day we were there because, you know, it's a long drive and everything. The next day we said, let's go do a hike. So uh, we were on the North Umpqua River. There is a trail that follows the river for almost 80 miles. And they've broken it down so that if you go from this trailhead to, to this trailhead, this is kind of what you'll see. This is the mileage and blah, blah, blah. So we thought, let's just pick a section and we'll just start going. And so we start going on this trail. And it's, now mind you, by the time we kind of got going, we were kind of lollygagging around. We didn't leave the camp till like 10-ish or something. It was already getting really hot. So um, we were out there and um, we're like, I think this is poison oak here on the side of the trail, like everywhere. And I know they warn you of poison oak down in that area, but usually it's not right on the trail. Well, this was like right on the edge of the trail. It was going up the trees and it was, and we thought, oh my gosh, Millie's got to stay on a leash, which usually she's really good about. Did we just let her go on the trail and she just follows along when she starts to get tired she just walks between us and it's all good but we didn't want her to brush up against it because if she brushed up against it and then we touched her we could get it and it was just like that made it kind of stressful so we jim you know jim had her on a leash so that i could walk in front of him and she could just be between us and um you know she didn't quite understand why she was being punished and then it was just starting to get really warm and we do have for her what's called a swamp cooler and it looks like a like a jacket you would put on them but you get it wet and it holds water and it actually keeps her cool and it's a light gray color so she her being black she gets hot really fast plus she's like this far off the ground and the ground's hot so it helps her keep cool and oftentimes when we've hiked with her um, people will stop because they think she's wearing a jacket in the heat and I'm like yeah but my dog's not panting and yours is <laughs> so she doesn't like wearing it she hates wearing it <laughs> just like anything else she wears but this is like I imagine it feels like putting on a, a wet bathing suit where you're like because <gasps> it's cold and it's wet but it keeps her cool and and so she's good so and some of the pictures you may see her with her little swamp cooler on so anyway, we hiked for a while. We were kind of going in and out of burn areas from previous wildfires that have been in the area over the years. And when you get into those areas, you don't have as much shade. And it just started to get hot. And we're like, you know, let's bag it. So we ended up hiking like five or six miles. And so we were like, okay, we're good. And so the next day we decided to go to Crater Lake, which Jim thought was about an hour, hour and a half away. It was more like two-ish <laughs> or more. But a beautiful drive and we're going to Crater Lake and as we got closer it was getting cloudier and cloudier and, and you have to pay to get into the National Park and we're sitting there um, at the little you know ranger hut where you're paying and I'm like I think it's starting to rain. All of a sudden you just hear these big blops of rain like huge drops hitting the top of the truck. Sure enough it started raining we're like well okay this will be good well maybe we'll just maybe we won't get out too much today. And so Jim said, you want to drive around the rim because there's a road that goes all the way around the rim of the crater. And we thought, you know, neither of us have ever done that. Let's do that. And it was so cool because it was thunderstorming across the lake. So it's just rumbling. You just and I love thunderstorms and it's just rumbling. It wasn't cracking. So it wasn't freaking Millie out because she doesn't like that. The rumble, she just sort of was like, what's that? But didn't get scared. So we drove around the rim of Crater Lake, which was so fun. It's so beautiful. It was neat to see the thunderstorm moving across and we would pull out on all the little pull out things. Um, I guess just two weeks prior to that, the road wasn't even open because of snow. So timing wise, it was great. There wasn't a ton of people because it was a Wednesday and we just saw some really neat things. And then we got to one point where it said um, there was like a side road that went off and it said to the pinnacles it was like seven miles. We're like, let's go see what that is. That was the coolest thing. It's like at the edge of the park and you go down this road about seven miles and you're basically what you're seeing is in this canyon, there are these dirt 
spires. And basically what that was is back when that when Crater Lake was a mountain and it was getting ready to erupt, you had vent holes. So these were just like tubes basically releasing steam and pressure and stuff like that. Well, that also hardens because it's hot. Mount Mazama Blue made Crater Lake. Over the thousands and thousands of years, there's water traveling through this and it eroded and eroded around these vent pipes. And so it was just so cool. And what was really neat to see too, and you'll see in some of the pictures, is you can see the, the different um, types of dirt because it actually looks like it's shadowed on the top and then it gets lighter and that's just the color of the dirt. It was so neat. And the, the thing that's hard when you go into a national park is you can't take any dogs on any of the trails. She can be in the park and she has to be like, she can go in the parking lot and that kind of thing, but she can't go on any of the trails. And there was this little half mile trail that supposedly takes you down this thing. And Jim goes, I'm going to go down. I'm like, okay, fine. So Millie and I are just like staying by the parking lot and I'm taking pictures and we're looking at stuff and he's doing his thing. And then he comes back, he goes, you've got to go see. It's so cool. I'm like, all right. So he took Millie and I took off down this trail and it gave you a much better view of these, these spires that came out. And it was just so cool. And it was like such a great find. And we were like, you know, that was worth going down there for and went back up and continued around. And it was just neat because it was something new that neither of us had done. And we love to just be like, oh, what's down here? Let's go see. And so we just spent the entire day doing that. And it was fun for us to go back. And we were like, oh, remember, this is where Scott dropped us off when we started our PCT hike. And remember, we went here and this is where we saw deer. And I think that's where we saw the hawk eating or whatever. And you know, just all those memories came back because that's where we started our PCT hike. So, so that was really fun too. And um, as we were driving back, so we got done and we we're driving back to camp and we we're getting fairly close to camp, you know, within, I don't know, 20, 30 miles. And it was like, it was white on this side. I'm like, I don't remember there being snow here. We're too low. There shouldn't be snow. So we pulled over and it was hail. And you'll see a picture of Jim holding some hail and they're big. <laughs> big hail and it's already been melting because I don't know when it went through but it had gone through a while previous and I'm like thank goodness we weren't driving in that so that was the thunderstorm that was going across at some point dumped a bunch of hail in some of the pictures there's also a little video and you can actually and I was watching because we were watching lightning and so we were at Crater Lake and it's looking out towards Mount Thielsen and you can see lightning strike. So that's kind of cool. And so it was just a great, a great day. So the next, one of the hikes that's on this map of, of this big long hike is you can take kind of a side trail and go and see um, pictographs. And I'm like, I, we wanna go see that. So we go to the trailhead and we start hiking and wipe ourselves up with um, bug, we have um, like bug stuff and it comes on a wipe. I wiped us all up because there's a bunch of mosquitoes and stuff and because it was very damp and we start hiking on this little trail and then all of a sudden the trail just changed and it got to where um the the bushes and stuff were like growing over the trail and so you were actually having to push through it i'm like this just doesn't feel right this doesn't feel like this is used enough and then it makes me nervous because that's how you get ticks and so i'm like i just kept saying this just doesn't feel right and then all of a sudden the trail starts going like down 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 which is fine but you got to go back up and then we there was a tree across the trail and i couldn't get over it it was too big i couldn't get over it and it was we almost turned around i'm like i don't want to be a, i don't want to be the reason why we can't go on <laughs> so jim came back over and he actually had to shove me over the tree we keep going and it's like i just kept saying this just doesn't feel right my gut's telling me this isn't right it felt like it was going the wrong direction and it wasn't supposed to be very far before you saw pictographs. Pictographs are generally on rocks and there's no rocks and it was like, this doesn't feel right. So we stopped and we're trying to decide what to do and Jim like goes to brush a bug off and he goes, I've got ticks on my legs. So they weren't like in him, but they were on him and it's like, we got to get out of here. I said, pick Millie up. We're going out. We're getting out of here. Now she wears a collar that protects her from from fleas and ticks so i knew she was protected we took some of our wipe and wiped it on her but still she's black and like she's impossible to find ticks on so um 
we were just like get out of here and he kept picking ticks off his legs and i kept checking and anytime you felt any little anything you was like oh there's bugs we got back to the car by the time we got back to the truck Jim had picked eight ticks off of himself. We put Millie on the on the bed of the truck, and I'm checking her. I got two ticks off of her. So we had ten ticks all together. I never got any, so evidently I don't taste very good. Um, they None of them burrowed in or bit, but they were on us, and we're like, okay, that was just disgusting. <laughs> that was gross. I mean, we've had ticks before. Millie's gotten ticks before. Jim's had a tick on him. I don't think I've ever gotten one on me. I must really be <laughs> old and leathery and they can't bite me. <laughs> but anyway, um, that was the most we've ever seen. Now, I think that the, the bug stuff we put on us did protect us and protect him from them actually getting on him or going further. Same with Millie. But it still just gives you the heebie-jeebies. And then even when we're driving, you're just like constantly like I'm feeling like bugs are on me so we did some more driving around and took some weird roads up who knows where and and then just ended up going back to camp and then um on the last day we just kind of sat around in camp and I tried to knit for a little bit and you know just kind of this that and the other thing overall we had a great time um it was just it's really good that time of year on the 21st is my son james's birthday and he would have been 32 he passed away in 2005 and so we usually try and go camping around his birthday it just helps us to get through it so it was fun we had a really good trip and um looking forward to some another one we don't have any other camping trips planned not planned we do plan on trying to like if it's a nice weekend hey let's just try and go maybe tent camping but nothing's really planned um until we go to alaska at the end of august so we'll see we're going to be going um to the beach for the fourth so that will be fun i'm gonna get some knitting done i know i will so i'm gonna kind of plan some projects for that and um so I, I will see you probably in a couple weeks it may be three if i don't really have anything to show you although i, I want to show you i'll have to show you my painting because i'm hoping i'll have something done by then because i may tackle that maybe later today <laughs> we'll see so thank you for being here um everybody if you're celebrating the fourth of july please be safe and i will see you in a couple of weeks thank you